Just hold on. Yeah, no issue. Yeah. So it's visible now, is it? <coughs> yes, it's visible. Clear. Let me take a pen to just notify. Okay. So uh, today's our topic for the for the, all of the FDP members is electronic warfare and military communication riding over the millimeter wave range. You might be aware about the millimeter wave range or not. I don't know, but I will start from these. Uh, our scenario will be first. I will cover with the basics. It'll just for the understanding and come on the first page uh, on the same page. First, I will understand with the basics. Then I will introduce about the what about the electronic warfare systems and what are the components of EW systems. Might be some of the people are aware about that, but I don't know. The uh, students or research scholars might be getting come to first time come closer with the electronic warfare system. So I will go with that one. And then we will discuss about the, some of the technologies uh, with respect to the time, application levels, and how it will be uh, future beneficial for our electronic warfare um, components, or you can say the communication over the millimeter view. Most of the times we will discuss about the how it is useful with the application levels. Okay. So shall I go? So, Rajan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. So, it's a brief introduction about myself and that, uh, my company. That's uh, I'm a certified EMC engineer from KTH Royal Institute of Technology, Sweden, which is a certified for the MIL 461E, F, and G. Then I joined in 2019 to the uh, TB Electroconductive Product Limited, it, which is a 100% subsidiary of, which is a, uh, you know, TBA, which is a 100% subsidiary Electroconductive Product Limited. So back in the history, if you go, we are serving the industry from the 1893, uh, which is TBA stands for the Turner Brother Asbestos. So asbestos, when the asbestos has been banned, they will segregate it into different kinds of the components from the asbestos. We go with the electroconductive division and there we manufacture with the EMI shielding products and anti-static products. Then we will come across with the electronics industry, attacks, food processing, medical, and now we are concentrated on the defense industries. So first I will introduce about the electromagnetic spectrum. Most of the people who are on the board who are on the webinar right now, they are aware about the electromagnetic spectrum. So first one is we normally call as RF microwave. This is RF microwave. Then we call is a microwave range from the three, three megahertz to 30 megahertz. And above 30 gigahertz, we consider as a 300 gigahertz so millimeter waves, terahertz, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X rays, and gamma rays, which is ionization and ionization. So we focus on this area, which is microwave and millimeter wave. So electromagnetic spectrum. Why we consider first question is about why we consider the millimeter wave region while designing the electronic warfare systems or the electronic defense systems. So the microwave and millimeter waves can easily penetrate to the ionospheres. Hence, we are fully utilized for the SATCOM communications. Most of the defense communications are related with the SATCOM communications. So that's why we choose this millimeter wave and microwave frequency region, basically. But if it will travel the distances, it will give a kind of the benefits. It, it has some, several benefits, but while we collaborate with the internal product level or the in between the hierarchy of the products, we will go with these low frequency range, which is RF and mil, RF and microwave region. So half part of the microwave region will consider as a intermediate component accessibility and half of the part will consider as a millimeter wave and as well as the microwave. Frequency. So we have a several banks to just communicate, which is designated by the IEEE. So all of you know, aware about that, the K, L, S, C, K, K, U, K upper, K band, K, K lower, U, Q, V, D, W. So this electronic warfare systems are, uh, I think they are mostly concentrated over this K band, K upper band. And then D band is there where we will just discuss about that, which is on the component basis, not on the uh, tangible application levels, but D band is most of the included in the uh, component basis. So first, then we will just discuss. 
first then we discuss up after this choosing the electromagnetic spectrum why we choose the electromagnetic spectrum which is ionosphere now millimeter wave absorption and propagation why we choose it because high spreading losses and molecular absorptions they have some certain limitations and uh, along with that there is a coverage area so signal transmission distance line of sight the while it's traveling through the ionospheres there are some fading effects scattering effect absorption losses so these are the things we just need to conclude while we designing the systems that we will just over overthink about that so why we signal propagation characteristics are mainly significant to the atmospheric attenuation because it's totally a wireless communications you just consider then once we consider the wireless communication the second thing we just need to consider which is a free space path loss normally we consider this free space path loss which is a 120 db in the design considerations we take it as a 120 db or 119 db uh, then diffusion uh, diffuse reflections and limited penetration depths which is normally while we designing on the rf and micro rf and microwave region while we designing most of the designers we understand the skin depth what is a skin depth we consideration the same thing we just consider while designing the millimeter wave or the terahertz frequency range which is a limited penetration depth this is the most crucial factor you need to take care while designing the millimeter wave regions uh, just confirm to all of you i am audible and i am visible to all of you just let me know yes sir yes sir. yeah so every every 10 or 15 minutes just let me know i am audible just it's say something or just make some noise okay yeah and advantage of millimeter wave frequencies why we are choosing the first thing why we are choosing the millimeter wave range or fifth generation frequencies or the beyond five fifth generations or newly just introduced sixth generation while we designing while we designing mimos while we designing phase arrays we just consider it the sequences but what does it mean so those means that it's a why first thing is high data rate this is what we want in today's era that we considered then there is a wide bandwidth this is our second requirement then low latency this is our third requirement and then it's size constant just i just heard while i just uh, uh, jump over this meeting i just heard about the uwb so uwb is also we consider while we it's a uh, back end applications we normally use while we designing the millimeter wave region frequencies so small aperture small antennas uh, skin antennas tangible antennas non tangible antennas these are the, all come across along with this millimeter wave frequency range and millimeter waves itself you make you can measure that it's 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 a millimeter wave so a wavelength is in so much uh, in the region that you can you can just get affected by this reflections penetrations and the resolutions so you will get the better resolutions in this millimeter wave you will get the better penetrations limited reflections so so many reflections so many scattering effect even small parts will it will affect your design consideration so that you need to be consideration that we will look after in next slides okay why then just introduce you about advantages of millimeter waves and microwave region, uh, waves why we are choosing it because you just consideration microwaves are up to 30 gigahertz and we most of the we minute it's a meter of, up to millimeter centimeters of wavelength but after 30 gigahertz and 300 up to 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz we consider millimeter waves why we consider because with respect to those we are getting the millimeter waves and it but the limitation just we mentioned over here we have limited penetrations and limited reflections along with the increase the resolution they will increase the your resolution but they have some limited penetrations and reflections so that's why we need to go over this the bandwidths we are getting very high in the, the millimeter wave regions but on the same things we we, we have been affected with these small small the things which will be obstructed intentionally or non intentionally those will be obstructed through water okay so now this is our background about the millimeter wave region now we will jump over to the electronic warfare systems yeah <clears throat> thank you yeah electronic warfare systems so electronic warfare systems how 
where and why. First, we will introduce about ourselves with the electronic uh, warfare systems. EW, most of the peoples are confused between the e electronic warfare systems are correlated with the electronics. So they consider themselves, they are manufacturing, designing the digital electronics, power electronics. It then considered as the electronic warfare systems. But these are the sub systems for use for the electronic warfare system. So electronics, it's not strictly meant for the electronics, but it is a part of the electronics, but which will use along with the electrons as well as the electromagnetic energy. So electronic warfare systems are mainly considered with the electromagnetic energy that we need to take care. And everywhere, the electromagnetic energy is uh, time constraints, uh, time instantaneous value, instantaneous value, basically. So you cannot predict that this will be a uh, constant for time. This will be uh, subsections of this upcoming area of the, these will be the constant for the limited time of period and that will be changed. No, it's an instantaneous value for at the time of the things that will be instantaneous. So for the EWs, we are finding, exploiting and disabling in image communication that is our primary object to achieve. And what, how we can achieve that we segregate into three parts which is a EA electronic attack. First one is attack. Intentionally, you are attacking it. Second thing is protection. You are protecting from the, just like uh, whatever we are saying in the electromagnetic compatibility, let live and live by the other's interferences. So same thing, protection we use, whether you need to figure it out, whether it is coming from the friends or foe. If it is coming from the friends, let them allow. If it is come for, then block it as it is. So this is called a protection. And then another one is electric counter measure, measurements, which will support these two, EA and EP, by taking the decisions to the EA and EP, electronic attacks and electronic protections, that you will get some systems which will be used in your uh, electronic systems management or electronic counter measurements. <clears throat> So these are the, you can just, this is, you will get this some better idea about how this is. These are the electronic uh, attacks. Intentionally, you are attacking it from this end, this end. Then you are intentionally getting some counter measurements by checking some kind of the systems you will just put over here and analyze it, making some decisions. Then you will transfer it to the, your decision making systems and they will, they will take to the target. The electronic support measurements. This is you will take it care of. whatever the this is this will act as your support measurements or protection systems intentionally you will generate some protection intentionally you will generate some electronic counter measurements then this will be act as an ecosystem so ea ep and ecm this will be act as a one key system which will call as a electronic warfare systems yeah thank you then another thing is electronic support measures esm which will support only support so but this support is necessary to took actions around the counter measurements and electronic counter measurements. So this is a ESM. ESM will have some illnate, signate, detection, finding, analysis, identifications. So that you will just work it out. Then there is the electronic counter measurements. So counter measurements will act as active or passive. Active means you active you generating some noise. Intentionally you are generating some noise and you are taking care. Passive means you are already taking care this granted, this uh, this noise will be occurred. So you will take some protection. That is what we call the passive. The electronic counter measurements, it should be anti-active, whatever jamming once if you are taking intentionally radiating some energy or radiating some electromagnetic radiations, those are made too harmful for even for you also. So in Counter measurements you already taken care and you're protecting your equipment as well as coming as well as detecting that whether it is a friends or foe. That's you will take in care. So this is how this inter interrelated with this each others. So electronic attacks, we have a jamming, deception, directed energy, uh, anti-radiation missiles, expendables that we will discuss. So we will more discuss about on the electronic attack because uh, we are uh, within this by 2025, we will take care of this, all this EA measurements most of the time. You know, we are well aware about the electronic protections. We are now saturate our uh, PSUs, DRDO, DMRL, Nidhani, and uh, all these kind of PSUs are already saturated with the electronic protections. They are well advanced in that one. Now they are 
planning to attack to digit so they are constantly developing their attacking tools so electronic warfare systems we have a threat warnings we will measure analyze and put some some red flags yellow flags and these things to just collecting these then we will figure it out from where it is coming why it is coming whether it is a frame for we take it and then we will support it <clears throat> so this is the some kind of the things you will get it so electronic attack is a destructive and non destructive that we will just concluded destructive that means you intentionally send the frequencies and taking care that just like a rf jammer you intentionally send it non destructive that means it will not act is non destructive that is rf jamming that is we will intentionally send it and just put it it will not destroy destructive is directed energy weapons that what we call directed energy weapons so we have also directed energy weapons along with the indian teams so that is a destructive intentionally you send it and you don't want any kind of the reflections you don't want any kind of things so for the destructive one you can also share with these electromagnetic pulses these pulses you can also transmit so that is a kind of the destructive thing electronic protections you take a passive electronic protections most of the times rather than the active because active might be not helpful for you while you are working on the same ecosystems so that you can just consideration then there is a ew systems es es is about the protection from friendly ew and protect from uh, enemy electronic warfare systems so protection to get a protection friendly from the that we get the some emission controls that just like uh, when you are using active active electronic protections that for the active means it will contact constantly looking after this friendly ew because you know that these are this is this frequency or these pulses are coming from our friends so this can be put down in the active mode passive you don't know that from the enemy's perspective what what kind of uh, enemy attacks they will come up to, to you so that's why we need to took up for the passive protections so in pra passive protection we mostly consider em hardening emission control that we will take care at the time of the compliances we will most of the taking care with the compliances as we say 461 e f g or 466 on the systems itself we can calculate 466 or the i triple a 299 for the shielding effectiveness or i triple a 299.1 which is a smaller in size we can just get some the direction antennas we will put some direction antennas we will figure it out from where it is actually leaking or we are getting some emissions or the we are it is susceptible or not that we will just figure it out with the by taking the compliances so normally we compile our systems for this kind of a uh, hardening emc hardening so for that one we will just compile our e electronic warfare systems the rest of the things are we are intentionally uh, taking care with the things electronic attack electronic protections we will intentionally taking care of these things then we will get the better idea about this one we have uh, ew support which is a threat detection threat suppression and threat neutralization these are the three things because we normally working on the threat we intentionally figure it out the threat detections that's why we use the directional antennas we figure it out the or directly directive antennas 8 by 8 arrays 16 by 16 arrays this kind of we use for the directional antennas attack we use rf jamming pulsing clock pulses intentionally e1 e2 e3 pulses which will be saturate which will be getting the high energy pulses these are the attacks the protection you provide the em hardening level on the protection that is the electronic threat protection okay now we just slightly we checking care with the electronic attack while going with this another things we will just consider on the why we need what are what were the segregations or the what are the frequency clients or application levels that we need to take it at so targeted facilities are equipments or personal to destroy or neutralize the degrade or degrade this is our basic thing if we cannot destroy our enemies things we just neutralize or degrade it so that's why we use over here rf jamming drone counter systems we are designing drone counter systems we intentionally we designing to just uh, navigate from uh, if we cannot neutralize it or the destroy it we can just misguide it by counter by sending some kind of the pulses to the uh, gps signals by 
identifying those GPS signals along with the bandwidth. So this kind of uh, target facilities we just taking care. So we normally we do as a spooping, spooping and jamming. These we consider signals. Destructive, whatever I call uh, that time, this direct energy weapons, anti-radiation missiles. Area, uh, DRDO is working to hard kill. Now these days, uh, they have a rudram along with them for the ASRM. Direct energy weapons, they are continuously working. I will just on the next slides. I just mention what kind of working we are getting on this one. The examples are noise jamming, chaff. Intentionally, we are setting the chaffs. Uh, angle dissipation and decoys. We normally go with this angle dissipation and decoys. We normally put the decoys while we are correlated with the when if you are designing something and you come across with the requirement for the army ground based systems. So this angle dissipation and decoys are the primary target uh, products you can design. Then if you are designing from surface to air, then you can think about the noise jamming or false target. And if you're going from this uh, air to air, so you can think about the chaff, how this chaff will be used. So uh, while designing, you just need to understand first, what is our most least impedance things that you can match with your target. So that just like a people's are, a, people's are normally says that make, keep it simple. So that's the simple things. If you working on the ground systems, why should you care about these chaps and false target? Just go ahead and just design your system to just the decoys and angle, uh, angle dissipations and the ground things. Then next thing is uh, electronic attacks. So flares, anti-infrared guidance, which will gives you while you are using on this air to air attack, you can just put down the anti-infrared guidance which will just move ahead on that one. Disposable on the things, the disposable uh, disposable jammers, anti-communication, anti-tracking, and spooking. These are the mostly uh, used by the people who are going for the, some Reiki operations. They use these jammers. They uh, intentionally put down the spooping and the anti-tracking and anti-communication links to them that they will just misguided. The smoke is anti-laser and visual. It uh, still till that uh, uh, DWs, directed energy weapons, are not well developed in the globally level. So smoke is just an option right now for the visual one. Uh, smoke cannons are there. The, these things, but it is not hundred percent secure. It's getting the accuracy level is near about forty to forty-five percent of these things. Then sensors, this just like intelligence gatherings, ECCM, ground semi detectors, acoustic detections, ground penetration radars to identify the mines, uh, mine sweepers, these kind of sweepers, anti anti flare sweepers. So these are the sensors you can design, and these sensors are mostly looking after the uh, FMCW frequency modulated continuous wave. FMCW kind of these pulses they need to understand, and it will more react on the microwave millimeter wave and I think you can work on the sub millimeter wave or the sub terahertz frequency range as you are a design designers you are a mtech students your thesis should be come across with this one that uh, you can choose you can uh, find the different different variants which are available right now because uh, we are developing the prototypes and uh, uh, Right now, what happened that uh, in market that we are not getting any kind of the fundings right now for the while we are developing the prototypes. So you just think about how you can develop, recirculate or rearrange your upcoming uh, projects on such a level that it should be, it should not be more than to just introduce new systems because all the subsystems are available. So just think about how you can use those already developed systems and just figure it out the new variants on behind them. that. Uh, IP is uh, pro intellectual property protection. This is, this is, this is, this should not be your ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal should be just work on that one. Uh, these are the subsequent parts are there, how you can tackle it. These are the, all the legal and uh, intellectual property, but think about the, how the, you, how we can develop more and more sensors over here, the sensors, you can just design 
from from the research perspective you just need to take care that how we can develop the sensors that's 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 from my end that you can just work on that one for this uh, uh, faculties for this upcoming uh, students you just think only work on that now acoustic and sonar because that's an only use for the naval now most of the people are not aware about that we are just trying to figure it out along with the naval uh, systems to, to find out the directed energy uh, below water right now we are just directed from the surface to air air to air uh, available brahmos is also available for the supersonic super hypersonic supersonic missiles agni 5 is available but those are not made for the underwater warfare right now so considered on this topic also that you can design any solutions and you can come up with the product now you can work on that one and take care whatever ip is you want you can take it out then just like i told you that drd already rudram one is developed by the drd this is kind of things so how its anti radiation missiles is follow towards the source of the radiation source of radiation is a radio signal or a thermal radiation they have a both of the capabilities detection capabilities are either two or both I, they can detect all things sometimes it they will detect and figure it out the what is the delta in between the thermal and radio signals or rf signals and then they will figure it out how to tackle that one though it's already controlled with the control board so it can kill the sources of the radiation now uh upcoming technologies will be introduced by our enemies our own government will be mostly considered on the chemical weapons or biological weapons so this is the one part of the electronic protection it is made in the ea perspective but now it is converted to the eps so electronic protection electronic warfare protection will be considered from this AR, arm and anti radiation missiles then this is what i would like to so i will just describe you more about this dew because uh, i will say must of the say that this this should be uh, expertise in the coming uh, era or the by 2025 2027 2028 i give all these uh, things through of this one so there are two sources two major subsystems are one is a laser source you can check it out this is two subsystems one is a laser source and second is how you control your directive pattern of the beam to take to destroy your target okay so this what we are talking about here i will just yeah i will just call it yeah next thing so dwe most of the people we have our you heard the some rumors or no, i don't know you are aware about or not but the kali is uh, our own systems in this in, in the earlier news you can also see our former prime uh, former defense minister mr manohar parikar also just mentioned that kali stands for the kilo ampere linear um, injector module we are available with the 5000 we are available with the two, so many variants that uh, 5000 10000 200 100 500 even 20 25 25 and uh, uh, 50 variants are also available number kali 50 kali 20 kali 5000 these are available so this this is this is not falls on the daw because this is not working on the laser principle for the it's working on the energy particles has been enhanced and it will destroy in the form of the electromagnetic pulses so what happen you have a source Why? What does the Kali exactly do over here? One second. Yeah. So what Kali is do? Kali just generate some electromagnetic pulses, which is in the form, which is in the form of the E one, E two, E three pulses as per the sources, and it will transmit. So it will not destroy that particular product or particular object. It will just work on the electronic components, onboard components which are available on that particular object. so it will just destroy that just like it will act as a ea but in the non destructive format but we still we have some evidences that we used it kali in our as a dw direct energy weapons but those energy weapons are not a source of laser but it's a source of ep emp or you can call the emp 
EMP stands in the E1 pulses, E2 pulses, E3 pulses. Depends on your, if your target is just nearby, it will analyze it and they will distribute it over these things. Then uh, another thing is, uh, if you consider our Indian, Indians are working, uh, it's still in the conceptual basis, but still you can figure it out on the what are the how, what are the obligations we are getting from these uh, un nations or the what are the things we are getting on because we are unable to move beyond that particular uh, we are developed with the 25 kilowatt of product prototype but we cannot get so it's a durga second it's our basically first one is a kali so kilo ampere linear injector that's it's it's a kind of the that's that's i believe that it's a coming from the kali as a shakti and you are from the West Bengal, so you you are more aware about the Kali Mata. So yeah. don't go in there. So the another one is Durga second. Durga stands for the directionally unrestricted rays, uh, ray arrays, guns. It's a form of the gun. Earlier, uh, there is one uh, product which we developed from the PBA for base systems UK, which is a EMP gun, which is designed and developed under the elect, uh, Indian subsidiary. So it's an EMP gun, which is uh, act as an E2 pulses, but destroy on this drone, on the GP, GPS signals only. So that was our main intention. So that we demonstrate and that we get this uh, from the base systems. Then this is a directly uh, directionally unrestricted ray array guns. Uh, so that's why it's called the Durga. And right now it's on the conceptual basis. So this Durga uh, will around we are our government drdo or the all the psus are looking after which is uh, 100 100 million dollars is subjected for this 100 kilowatt of directed energy weapons and for that one they are looking for solid state devices fiber and chemical these are the three variants it will act just like a brahmos missile mark one mark two mark three uh, we design from this communication basis from the RF, microwave, and fiber optic. These are the three communication links we develop. And that modem is designed by myself. That modem has been qualified for the is electromagnetic compatibility, Brombo's Mark III range. So just like that one, we have a one unit, which is a solid set. Another one is a fiber optic uh, collaboration, just like a fiber optic uh, communication in between that one. And third one is a chemical. This, that's why how will, uh, it will detect as well as neutralize the things. So to just uh, why I'm going to uh, invite over here that uh, you can just concentrate on the solid state and the fiber one. Chemical, you might be have a divisions or not. I don't know HIT is having chemical technology on that particular level or not. But they, still you can deliver with the solid, solid state and fiber. This will be your... Uh, primary focus to deliver the solutions and take a research forward in these two areas and this will be not only made for this uh, particularly for the land ground or anything this will be made for the land sea air so and the unit uh, i think this uh, durga is taken care by the laser science and technology center delhi these are the communicate uh, these are the prime institute now they are taking on that one which is this this is the information which is publicly and publicly available in the public domain by the government of india so you can you can also verify and try to correlate with this uh, laser science technology center delhi and try to develop along with them you can mutually collaborate but if you have a conceptual thing that you can develop and you are visible so try to uh, do a research on the solid state devices most of the time so then a prototype is ready along with us, which is uh, 25 kilowatt. But uh, normally that is used on ballistic missiles right now. Right now it's available only for the ballistic missiles. And distance is just near about 5 kilometer, not much more than that. So it is just a prototype and that we uh, design and showcase at uh, to, towards our defense, Ministry of Defense. Uh, uh, to when Monohar Parekar was the defense minister and earlier uh, Pranav uh, I don't know, uh, I'm not getting the defense minister name, but at that time we just developed uh, and showcased the prototype. And then, <clears throat> there is a certain things are available, which is what called uh, US, USA. Right now, USA is using Helios. 
high energy laser h e l i i stands for integrated uh, optical uh, dazzler and surveillance helios so they are having the capability of 60 kilowatt of power as a directed energy so they can destroy anything and the, i think uh, if you you would like to explore much more as a student so you can go on uh, any website or you can just go on google and search it for the helios you will get a lot of documentary over there from that you can also take the and there are some several images are available in the youtube video so you can just snip it and try to figure it out what kind of uh, equipments and what kind of uh, equipments you can design for our system durga second and you can propose to your things because this is how you can research on your paper and projects okay so this is about all about the dew uh, directed energy weapons <clears throat> then we will just think about what are these eps techniques uh, okay the epics are coming along with this spatial spectral temporary and knitting the spatial is just about the side lobes or monopoles burn through monopoles uh, while you are talking about the satellite communication side lobe cancellations ultra side lobes and monopoles along with the burn through burn through you might not aware about that but the people who are working on the rf jammers spooping uh, who in B, their undergraduates pro program, they're working on the RF jammers. They might be aware about the one through. But the monopoles, uh, each and every uh, is aware about the monopole radar or the monopole satellite communications. This is how, how this monopoles is working. So, next thing is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Rudolph, the benefits of using EP techniques may be summarized as the signal to noise or signal to uh, jamming ratio. This is the most why I am taking this over here. You need to research on this signal to noise and signal to jamming ratio because uh, you have to enhance it. Because most of the time, RCS is too small while we are getting on our while we analyzing the signals. That signal to noise and signal to jamming is most crucial. So, if you ask me to just for this kind of the thesis. I will go ahead with this signal to noise and signal to jamming are my first priority. And then the radar saturation. The, this is, you, know, you take with the wind radar, MIT radar, radars, uh, CW radars, pulse radars, uh, monopoles, anything, duplex, fast duplexes, anything you can consider. Radar saturation is a still, I am just saying that it's a still a most crucial thing while designing the applications. I'm I'm still also facing the same thing while we're designing because it's uncertain thing. So you can just work on this one. You can try to figure it out how you can design uh, most of the things in the preventive basis as a prevention of the radar situation. And second thing, if you ask me, I will go with the false target because if you are you can generate your false target. Think about that. Uh, your comp your enemies also generate the false targets and here i will just make sure that now you can go ahead with the ai if you're using millimeter waves because we are using a artificial intelligence to design the power amplifiers and taking the decisions in the closed loop normally we use the closed loop <laughs> while designing so while getting the false target detections rejections whatever you want a, you just develop your algorithm or the AI. Now it's a time to come across not only on the electronic components, but the introduce your artificial intelligence in a component level itself that your component will be sustained for that particular electromagnetic compatibility. So on this way, we are just delivering our solution in the upcoming uh, next year, things. So then, then is EW support. How these electronic office systems are worked. This is, this is your second most after EA, after DEW, directional energy weapon. This is your second thing. You can do the research on these things, which is a electronic warfare support, which is uh, first thing is uh, if you go ahead with this uh, flowchart, you can just consider this flowchart in this direction. Mission preparation, which will CO will take care of this action. Mission execution is... Uh, Lieutenant uh, commanding officer will take the actions. Post mission, which is on field, majors or captains who will take the actions of commander, 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 they will take the actions. But 
the most crucial part is data analysis, dis, uh, disseminations, and data update. This this part will take care by the CEO. So your commanding officer need to be get that much of effect, visual effect that he can take uh, decisions within a fraction of seconds. So detection, tracking, recognition, targeting, warning, destruction, and threat avoidance. This these are the most crucial terms for that if you look after the detection how your system will be more effective with the millimeter wave regions because along with the millimeter wave region your bandwidth is getting uh, uh, border uh, wider bandwidth you will get it but along with the wider bandwidth you will get more and more noises introduced over there so while detection you just make sure that you are detecting it so you can use the artificial intelligence big data analysis machine learning whatever you want so i'm just saying that on as an electronic electrical engineer or electronics engineer you are taking admissions to the electrical mtech positions or the phd scholars but more concentrate on the cs part computer science parts because there we are not aware about that so if you are well qualified with the electrical engineers that's anybody can do any b b b tech diploma engineer can easily figure it out the electronic components that's not your part your part as a doc scholar or doctorate by taking over here how this will be helpful with along with the upcoming technologies which is ai threat analysis intelligent iot's you can use anything there is a there is a small things you just need to pick but most of the part you can design your algorithms in here data analysis disseminations database because i it's my personal opinion that computer science students are not well aware about the, how the electronic pulses will behave okay so you just you are aware about the electronic pulses but you are i am thinking that electrical and electronic engineers are much more highly qualified that they can take care of the cs parts and that's it because it's my opinion my be cs students are very well versed about the electrical facilities over there so you can just take about this and then you can just think about the how your artificial intelligence over the millimeter wave range will take care of this warning this warning should be uh, in a such a format that you this commanding officer should not be um, think over it this warning is coming now that algorithm is set now you have to take this action so commanding officer will make his mind within fraction of seconds or 2 or 3 seconds so that's why while taking care of these things tracking recognition anybody can recognize it while using this open cv anybody can face detect the face detect the enemies that's not a job your first target is detect and give them a warning to co you just consider on this destruction threat avoidance there are a lot of people are available over there scientists e scientists are available who will de design this destruction and threat avoidance now your research should be uh, compatible with the warning and detection only now you will come with the signal intelligence why i am talking about this database discrimination data analysis warning and detection because this will include the signal intelligence signal intelligence has a two parts there are several intelligence just like i said you that image intelligence acoustic intelligence human intelligence open source intelligence phase detection phase detections uh, 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 object detections these are the all the things but you should concentrate more on the warnings and detections so signal intelligence over here is communication intelligence and electronic intelligence so communication intelligence are coming from the foreign communication transmission intercepted by then the internet recipients so this is called a communic com comet segit comet elit these are the electronic intelligence just like a electronic signals are getting interpreted so the in while the, doing the interpretation of the electronic signals the most of the things you have to your co should be in a such a position that your warning should be in a visible position you are this warning you will get this warning over here as it is on the within 10 microseconds or uh, 1 microseconds or 10 milliseconds thousand fraction of microseconds that CO will get the action because CO will not think about that what should not he just need a warning and that should be a display so it's your job to design and develop in such a position that detection warning how you can convey to the CO forget about the this part mission mission education post mission discrimination data analysis you just consider how your algorithm will be 
scrap over here and it will go to the database and database will be updated as it is once you eliminate these things your uh, latency period will be getting decreased by the thousand part of the thousand seconds okay <clears throat> so this is while designing this one you just make sure that what this is a dynamic range it should be having a wide dynamic range because you you are not aware about that what you are getting so unwanted signal rejections and angle of arrival of measurements so that that this is what i'm thinking that these are the three parts because spectrum surveillance they will take care in anyhow they will, who is operating the uh, lte band they will take care of the spectrum surveillance forget about it but how this spectrum surveillance will be most effective with the wide dynamic range signal rejections and angle of arrival because it's totally depends on the how your signal is getting arrived how your signal is getting eliminated at the time of the signal rejections and how you put down the in terms of the dynamic range because most more more the dynamic range most of the signals you will get the display on the di display purpose so you can figure it out and you quickly analyze these small small things over there so consider on these three things which is a dynamic range signal rejection and angle of arrival these things you can design and while i'm getting considered over here that the sigint market you can check it over here now we are in the uh, i'm just concerned about why because in 2021 i'm just de designing this sigint we started designing by 2021 so i have uh, this market but 2023 I'm most of the time, I'm just thinking that 20%, this 20% of share will be occupied by 2030 by this Asia Pacific region. Because uh, forget about this, it, this part will be isolated from the countries. That's what I'm thinking as an industry perspective, this part will be isolated. So we will just concentrate on this Asia Pacific. Australia, New Zealand, Japan, uh, China, Taiwan, India, these are having some kind of the authority to manufacture, design your systems over here and make a ocean over here that this will be totally exported to this region. So just think about that and try to rearrange your systems on that one. So objectives are getting because objectives are to just provide it. Con just I told you that, that uh, continuous wave frequency modulations and SSB will be available over there. Okay, so while designing the radar and communication, what are the vulnerabilities? Vulnerabilities are EW receivers are vulnerable to detect and identify the local threats. So radars are getting vulnerable with the distance and velocity. That's why detection and the warning are the most crucial part in the design. The other part will be taken care by all the electronics and these things. That's it's. Uh, I'm personally thinking that only detection and the warnings are the most crucial parts in any any systems, any systems. So that's why I'm more concerned on that one. Then radar communi communications are vulnerable. Are uh term, while we are communication is getting signal threat which is a 6 to 40 gigahertz associated detectionations and designation sensors are 1 to 8 gigahertz so you can consider this is the millimeter wave region and this is your rf region or the microwave frequency region now 6 gigahertz to above 6 gigahertz it's a microwave frequency region so you can think that you need to work it on in the up converting and down converting you can concentrate on the devices which is used you can design your uh, thesis on a, such a way that your component will take care component part will take care you need uh, lo vfo uh, everything you will be need so consider on the design and make sure that that vfo is having their embedded facility while you design your vfo just make it as a module so you are designing the system in a model format so those module will use as a subsystem of any system so Tactical communication threads are in between 100 megahertz to 440 gigahertz. So this, that's why I'm talking about this the warning <coughs> and detection. These are the most crucial parts. So you can think about it and re re rewrite your thesis on that one and take care of your things. Okay. Then <coughs> most of the things 
I am just talking about you by millimeter wave. So I will give you insight that 94 gigahertz. Most of the developments are increased in this 94 gigahertz of guided munitions and missiles. So uh, uh, unmanned air vehicles, munitions, uh, munitions and the missiles are more concentrated on the 94 gigahertz of band because there you will get the a lot of advantages over there. A lot. I'm talking about the lot. Be normal uh, right now, whatever the EWS systems are upgrading themselves, which is a two gigahertz to 18 gigahertz, not much more than that, because we are not uh, research well research on the 94 gigahertz, but <clears throat> we can go on go on that. But uh, most of the times we are uh, down converted to the two gigahertz to 18 gigahertz, and then we will rework on this processes. So. We need a we need a uh, systems from the researchers or the scientists that how we can use it 94 gigahertz. We will convert it as it is. We will reduce our latency time and the process times, and the systems will make it cheaper and cheaper in the industrial formats. So just <coughs> think about it and just do yourself on that. <coughs> Why electromagnetic? Just give me a minute. Okay. <coughs> So electromagnetic compatibility, which is the most crucial part while we are taking care, I will showcase you on the visible format that when you are getting your IR or the EVO electronic objectives findings, which is having range of 1.5 kilometers, directional finder antennas, you are having 2.5 kilometers. And these are the within the range of the two to 10 kilometers. So radar will be getting, one RCS will be getting radar of uh, square centimeter within five kilometers and the full scale will be 10 kilometers, not much more than that. So, but uh, uh, our prototype, I just like I told you, DWE, Director Energy Weapons, has been directed this energy at only five kilometers. So, which is our first RCS with decoy, RCS has been detected and we tested over there. So, when, and while we are trying to get in much more in the higher kilometer regions in this peri area, um, 10 kilometer we try to achieve it but we are getting around 10 kilowatt of energy at 10 kilometer and which is not sufficient to destroy any target frankly speaking so that's that's how you need to work it on because what happened why we are not getting it into uh, directed energy weapons in a feasible format that while you are direction uh, you can generate the source but you need to direct those source energy into particular pattern so you need a uh, you you have to generate you will generate more energy heat energy and you require heat a lot of heat dissipation materials over there so you can uh, think about the how you can design your heat dissipation materials for the direct energy weapons and you can reach to the concerned parties so they are ready to uh, approach you with the thermal insulation solutions <clears throat> radar operating in the different frequencies so just take care of this thing that Early warning search and detection. Uh, while I'm talking about the detection, you can just think about you need to detect, you down convert your uh, millimeter wave to the UHF and UHF for the early radars. Then L and S band is searching for the search and track radars. C band is going for the imaging radars up to X or K, U, K, K upper band or K band, K upper, K upper band. Then missile seekers, whatever the uh, Rudram or ARN. Uh, anti-radiation missile seekers these are the missile seekers which are used which is going up to 18 gigahertz so that's why people are more concentrated on this frequency range from 2 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz of frequency range are now traditionally people are more concerned on this one because it will reduce their cost it will cost economical and you all of you are aware about that our indian market is more cost sensitive rather than the objectives so you can also think on the same way and rewrite your thesis on the same page that you will get the better approach or better incrementations. Then I will just give you one example how this is. This is a K band transceiver, K upper band, which is in the frequency range of 27 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz, which is what we call the K upper band. The, the military forces, radar, aircraft, satcom communication, line of sight communication, radio communication, everything, everything falls under this one uh, design for the satcom communication under K band. K 
okay so application i will just give you the application that it's uh, x band k band or police radars normally use um, high speed uh, guns you can find figure it out for the speed regulations so for but the advantage uh, there are some advantage that you can generate multiple applications earlier it was only used k upper band was used for this uh, public do industrial applications then they will figure it out how they can be uh, beneficial for the defense applications but along with that one they will come across that it has a high atmospheric absorption even rain droplets will absorb by for this frequency range so that's why they are not using in this one and the production cost is too much high uh, we, we we even tba uh, tba also try to develop one k band transceiver on the mimic uh, ICs, IC format, but uh, our prototype cost is too much high that uh, we cannot sustain. So we drop that idea and we will just consider on the KA band waveguides for this antenna perspective. So then this is this is one kind of the things which is a W band, 94 gigahertz, whatever I told you that uh, most of the persons are working on this 94 gigahertz of antenna. Most of the designs are considered on the 94 antennas so this is this is what we do the if band is two to four gigahertz again you convert it into two to four gigahertz so you have to think about this two to 18 gigahertz of frequency band every time while you're designing because you you need to either up convert or down convert the frequency signals then you will do the work on that one. okay so this is I will just, uh, yeah, the, here I will explain you what exactly monopole stacking system. This is the monopole stacking systems. While we are, IF frequency is getting higher in the range from the 4 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz. If you drastically getting into this range, you are getting null, nulling. What we call, if you are antenna designers, you will get the idea about that. What is a side lobes? we are calling as a nulls so nulls should be suppressed that your phase will be aligned with your directive patterns so if you moving your high up center uh, intermediate frequency from 2 kilo uh, 2 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz your nulls are getting down your nulls are getting down so you will get the best monopulse comparator for the if so in your design on your thesis you can design your if monopolis comparator for the higher frequency range just think about that it should not be much more than three or two nulls over there okay so you can also take of this of this note that you can design your thesis on this one <clears throat> then line of sight communications these line of sight communications are used in the geo positioning remote sensing uh, navigation, television application, telecommunication. So geo positioning uh, with respect to the radar, lidar, and remote sensing for the GIS. These are the two main applications. Normally, we, we can uh, further improve in these applications. Navigation, telecommunication, television application. These are the uh, RF and sub -mi microwave frequency region that you can just think about. So there is a no millimeter wave region has been introduced. So but for that while you're designing this one you can consider pa and siw substrate integrated waveguide or substrate integrated wave regions or transmission lines you can design you can design your thesis on this one how this siw will be more compatible with this one mixer lna rf switches rf switches will have a more market in upcoming in upcoming days rf switches will have a more market in this millimeter wave so you can generate this uh, thesis on this RF switches. Okay. Then, if you think that line of sight communications, you are up because K band uplinks are used 27, 27.5 to 31 gigahertz and 17.7 to 21.2 gigahertz, which is a downlink. So, 3.5 gigahertz of bandwidth you are getting, which is a wide range of bandwidth, and you can do anything. So just think about the uh, telemetry tracking, commanding and monitoring because C4I systems, C4I, these are the most primary uh, products or design should be consideration 
in upcoming days while we are moving from the LTE of 5G or beyond 5G frequency bands. So TTCM, CF systems, you should develop. C4R is a bulk system or as per the mole, mil 466, uh, four, four as per the mil 466, you have to qualify it. But you can generate your subsystems, you can design your subsystems in a, such a way that, that you will qualify for this C4I system. So telemetry, tracking and commanding and monitoring, TTCM. This you can concentrate much more because that's, that's, that's how you will get it. I will give you this one example, what kind of the product or what kind of the uh, models you can design, which first thing is IO, IO waveguide filters. Because still uh, from the European companies, uh, still I'm not getting that kind of the IOs, input and output filters, waveguide filters to achieve my design considerations. Still I'm lacking that. They are they are a band they are a branded filters branded products but still we are not getting any kind of the filters which will be qualified for that so lna for low noise amplifier power amplifier down and up converter if and variable frequency oscillators you can think about this vfa vfo sorry normal in normal systems we use the uh, v, vco variable control oscillator voltage control oscillators you can whatever you can say which is onboard oscillators but in the millimeter wave you need a variable frequency oscillators because you don't aware about it because your phase array should be continuously scanning in, uh, adaptive electronic scanning arrays you should add, array should be scanned so you need a variable frequency oscillators all uh, products are available right now in the market but you need to convert it on as per the customers or as per the Indian origin levels, because we can, we need to, we are uh, continuously working on the import substitution and we are facing this problem with the input output waveguide filters and variable frequency oscillators. So you, you can consideration in your design thesis. Then another one is image solutions or image millimeter wave image sensing. Uh, most of the people are aware about this sensing uh, devices because uh, analog devices are generating um, much more faster response time for this coming technology. So walk through trade detections are much more because uh, terrorist activities are getting higher in civilian areas. So we need a millimeter views. We, we cannot use uh, manual frisking, metal detectors, X-rays, X-rays backscattering now, which is a health concern, expensive and uh, resolution, la lack of resolution. So for this one, we need to go with the scanners, walk through and stop post scanners that you need to stop it over there, they scan it, or the people are walking with the distance. Those should be scanned. And here, here you can apply artificial intelligence and find out just like open CV, you can detect that face and analyze what kind of substitution, what kind of layout, what kind of frequency reflections you are getting from that body. And then you will go for, okay. So this is this kind of the amplitude you are getting. You are transmitting something you are getting amplitude then you will detect it. And uh, why I'm, uh, Telling this to you that you need to working on the design thesis because global electronic warfare market by 2028 is declined by this uh, 5.6 CAGR, which is about the 23,000, 23 billion, 23 billion of uh, market we are expecting in the upcoming um, by 2028. So if you if you can connect with us. For, uh, with your to use anything you have any uh free questions you can just ask um ask me on my email address you can connect me back or you can just call you can just uh, put down your questions on the surajit so surajit will just connect me back and we will definitely do the things so whatever we are developing over here our advanced technology designs we will train the people to design it. Tranky projects we are taking with respect to the defense and aerospace and shielding solutions for defense and aerospace. So this is from my end about the electronic warfare systems. 
and we are mainly working on the protective technology to shield the solutions for the aws so if you have any questions you can just ask and go ahead yeah please Raj. yeah thank you sir thank you for such a wonderful presentations regarding the electronic warfare actually most of us are not known about that things yeah. and uh, whether we can uh, do research that you have given idea with yeah. some uh, applications and also by providing some blog diagrams or systems uh, ideas you have shown. Yes. so one of our uh, participants have uh, raised his hand yeah sure sure so, just just allow him asok mane you can uh, now unmute yourself and can raise the question hello I think he no, he is not here. Mm, so, no, he's there, but uh, <laughs> maybe he is not. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> any, any other participants uh, have any questions? That you can ask. Okay. So for. Uh, yeah. As per your uh, talk, so 94 gigahertz will be the most promising area. Yeah, 94 uh, gigahertz will be most promising, not in India, but all over the globe, mm -hmm. because people are trying to develop and uh, okay. for 94, because most of the people are considered on the FM sub, sub CW on 70 gigahertz and 70 to 72 gigahertz on the automotive sectors, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the FM CW. But the 94 is the most promising um, frequency which I would like to explore basically okay. because that it will give a better down converter as well as up converter up to 110 gigahertz. Okay. Then you will get on the same local oscillator, you can uh, re reshuffle it okay. 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 Well, down and as well as up. So okay. that's from that's from my. Okay. So uh, in such a high frequency range, uh, you, you suggest that SIW could be a good uh, yeah. component so design yes design components because you you can uh, perform your researches over that and then you can come mm -hmm. up with, with this options then india market is open for yeah. that okay so now uh, we have uh, working on the side of but uh, not so uh, such high frequency ranges we, uh, we yes have, that's uh, because uh, right now it's it's not available SIW is not available cp mm -hmm. people are working with the cp cpws but mm -hmm. SIW will be give us the because it will more constant with the transmission lines. Mm -hmm. And if you achieve that along with the substrate, directed substrate or anything, mm -hmm. that uh, it will be more beneficial for you, each and everyone. The who uh, person who designed, person who researched, he can okay. easily took the IP on that. Okay, so for uh, with uh, just uh, simulative perspectives, so yeah. what kind of dielectric substrate can we use in such high frequency range? High frequency range, I prefer Rogers. Okay. Just dielectric I'm using. So dielectric constant for this millimeter wave, you can consider a, which is a point, uh, I think there is the mention 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. Yeah, but normally we use with the, uh, which is that? Uh, I'm not getting that, but because it's in my uh, another laptop. But okay. most of the time, we will while we are using with the CGPW, we use that one because that time we typically more is more about we are working on the 60 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we DK has been near about the. But I'm I I'm, I'm aware about that. I'm using Rogers three triple zero three or okay. four four three five zero something but most of the i use the three triple zero three uh three okay. double zero three sorry. okay 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 so, so that uh, rogers is uh, might be very costly component yeah costly for, component that's mm -hmm. uh, while we are designing the meta material components mm -hmm. the meta -material mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then also we need to figure it out we'll do the research on that one along with mm -hmm. along with these components the meta material will be the most promising subjective to just perform the activity over there. But uh, and un unfortunately, we are too way behind about the meta materials nowadays. Mm -hmm. 
we are just hoping that we are getting some kind of leave with respect to graphene and carbon nanotubes yes 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 yes, yes. this this carbon nanotubes will help us much more mm -hmm. rather than the graphene graphene is just a substitute but the cnt is uh, you can work on the cnt and okay, cnt okay. will give us the because they have a better selectivity mm -hmm. you can easily selective with the frequency okay. response okay. so so you can work on the meta material not an issue okay okay so um, so th this was a, a nice uh, discussion with you regarding this uh, activities on electron yeah. corpus or what and, yeah, i suggest i suggest yeah. your people should be more concerned on the direct energy weapons okay 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 okay, okay. okay. so you have you can just do and figure it out if you can publish some papers on the direct energy weapons you get the mm -hmm. chance to communicate you could get the chance to research on that one you strictly just uh, take actions on the direct energy because uh, with respect to the electronic attacks our peer peers we are way behind because mm -hmm. they are not uh, getting that break even point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are working on that one they uh, perform the prototypes they are but not at the that much level of the up to the helios helios is getting the 60 kilowatt of the power mm -hmm. right. but we are unable to get it we are just trying to figure it out with the 40 or 30 kilowatt of power yeah. So if you your research team is have the capability of that one, you start your research on the DA, DEW. Okay. Oh. That will help you out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your suggestions and the nice presentation. Yeah. Thank uh, and you for your valuable time uh, for this uh, FDP on RAMMC 2023. So in near future, we'll also uh, in touch with you. Definitely. Uh, what I will do, I will share my presentation with you. To this, yeah, this no, no. Okay. And, uh, yeah and for you ask me about something uh, questions so the questions will be come on these presentations only okay okay, okay. okay. it will be come on the presentations uh, you okay. just live, you just put down me one email so i will reply to that email okay okay okay, okay. thank you thank, thank you, you thank you very much for your time thank, thank you. you thank you so with this uh, we are closing our today's uh, session uh, the tomorrow session will start from 3 30 and uh, there will be one presentation on tomorrow uh, tomorrow is the last date of our five day app program so after that uh, after the invited talk we will have the validity sessions and after the validity sessions we will have the question answer sessions and the feedback sessions so there you must have to be present and also fill up the Google form uh, as a quiz we will provide to, to you. So that is mandatory for you all for to, to provide your feedback and the quiz. Okay. 